find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Today is February 3rd, 2015, and this is the Rambling Movie Minute, where we talk everything from movies from the week before, current, and still yet to come. From Pittsburgh, I'm Alango at Rambling Mango, and as usual, we have Sorg of Sorgatron Media. Yes, I am right here in Pittsburgh, ready to talk some movies, and oh boy, did I watch some movies this weekend, sir. Very, very exciting. It's cool. It was like SpongeBob. I got a review up already for that. You guys can check out on uh, thatramblingreview.com. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I also got to see uh, the free a free movie this weekend, but I'll talk about that later. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> so, box office this weekend, right? Before I get to the trailer of the week, I'll just jump into the box office of the week. And uh, I would say this whole month might be our slow month for movies when it just comes down to it uh this is why the uh this is why the oscar movies get so much play yeah because i mean again it was american sniper that pulled in and this is it was funny because i I like doing the math for these movies and i realized that the average for the majority of the year they we could we could judge the average movie of its popularity over a weekend if it got above thirty thousand. That was like the average. Thirty to forty thousand for like a slow weekend was the average. And that's what American Sniper got. The next movie up, I think, only pulled in fourteen, fourteen million. And that was Project Almanac, which I actually had wanted to see and I was wrong. It only pulled in eight million. That's the yeah. latest uh found footage one, right? Yes, yes. I think it's safe to say that the found footage uh, stuff is past. Like well, it was, are... it was cute the first couple times, right? Like we had Blair Witch, and then we had kind of a resurgence when we saw um, uh, was it Clover Cloverfield come out? Yeah, I, I loved mean, Clover... it. Now it's like there's so many of them. Oh, it's found footage, but this like the the ideas are not um, like are either too heady for the audience or not clever enough for the audience, you know? And, and there's like the in between is it's kind of hard to find that. What's the uh, what was the superhero like uh, found footage movie? I'm trying to remember myself, um, uh, but 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 it was the same thing. It was like on on previews, not terribly interested, but actually watched. It was like, oh, this is this is like when you watched Invincible. You're like, oh, it's an origin story, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like what what is this, you know? And um, I don't I don't know. I don't know. It's interesting. Yeah, people were saying this was a cross between Chronicle and uh, Echo, and I did not really want to see Echo. And I liked Chronicle, so it was kind of a it's kind of a weird mold, but I don't know. Like some people, basically the average review. I there are two reviewers that I like to watch on YouTube, and they both had pretty similar. Well, no, the one person really hated the movie. The other person's uh, the other person's review was you can sit through it without killing yourself. Oh man! But it, but it's a movie that you really could miss. Like it's not fun that. Yeah, it's not like you must go see this movie. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think with that, that review kind of sealed it for me because I was going to spend money. I have like, it's kind of sad. I have like 45 uh, free movie dollars from gift cards that I got from Christmas. And I have not used any of them yet. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I think it's going to be, um, um, uh, th- th- this is done. Until somebody else does a Cloverfield, does a Blair Witch that really kind of revolutionizes it. None of these is it. Um, well, I, I appreciate the, the efforts though, um, but they're just not going to be box office. Um, but they're going to be mm-hmm. fun stuff for you to check out on Netflix in six months. Yeah, yeah that's fine. That's fine. So, uh, you know, the Super Bowl happened. What? Yeah. And as much as I, cause you know, you know, I like sports, but I, I wasn't too thrilled with the outcome of the Super Bowl. 
So I quickly went to the commercials. And for this year, again, uh, we're getting a lot of movies coming to commercials. And, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, different spins, TV spots for the Super Bowl. Were there any commercials that, like, jumped out at you that you were just, like, more excited about? I mean, there was one no. that we have complained about on this show. <laughs> and I saw the trailer, and I was like, freaking bastards. Now I want to well, see well, this well, movie. Well, I can tell you, for the majority, uh, for for the movies, um, the only one that popped up is a sequel, sequel to Divergent that really kind of stuck out. Everything else is... Um, Everybody else has finally seen the trailer that we've been watching for the last three months. You know, I, I think in the case of Jurassic World, didn't bring anything new to the table. Um, mm -hmm. What else did we have? Uh, the Terminator Genesis. Everybody's like, what? There's a Terminator movie. You know, this is when the public realizes this is happening. Um, there's nothing yeah. really like I didn't think anything really premiered. I mean, the closest was that Divergent 2 movie that's coming out in March. You know, there was no like, what's my blockbuster for the summer? We didn't we didn't premiere an Avengers trailer. There wasn't a premiere of a Transformers trailer. We usually get that first glimpse of a Transformers trailer, say, at the Super Bowl, right? Um, and, and I don't feel like this happened this time. Now, the one I know, I, I what, what's, what's the movie? Because I know I'm excited about a TV show coming out. Oh, well, yes, yes. The TV show is besides the point. The movie that, um, sorry to say this, Internet, Fast and Furious 7. Oh, wait, wait. No, 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 no. I am all... Okay, wait, wait, wait. There were two things. Now I'm th I remember now. And Chachi's in the in the uh, audience right now in the chat room at live.circuitronmedia.com, and he can agree with this. The Fast and Furious 7, the Furious 7 trailer hit, and I, I text him. I was like, Furious 7? He's like, all in. I'm like, Piss Perfect 2? <laughs> Piss Perfect 2? All in. Guess what? Oh my guess gosh, yes. guess what we're doing? Yeah, I, I think we got two bro dates in the, in the future here oh, that's going gosh. down. Oh, gosh. I love the Pitch Perfect 2, but I, I was already on board. Once I heard the rumor that they were making the Pitch Perfect 2, I was on board. Um, but yeah, Fast and Furious. Like, it was. it's just like, it's not a day. Like, after so many trailers of seeing the car fly out of that airplane, I was like, I'm done with this movie. Like, who no, cares really, about this is this is the first major trailer I think I saw for it. No, no, it wasn't, Mike. Really? Seen, like, yeah, because remember, there was the one where all of them were going out the back of the car, and then you got um, Paul Walker's character jumps on the bus. They had they've been previewing it in front of like a boatload of movies. That's I don't I, what, dude. SpongeBob's first movie uh, I've seen since whatever last Marvel one was. Well, regardless, this trailer for some reason, this trailer just like put it over. Like now I'm I've already punched my ticket. It's already Chachi. Chachi's all in in the chat room. All in! It's <laughs> it's car porn. It's amazing. It's it's super crazy stump thing. We got Jason Statham. It's like a younger Expendables at this point, but cooler. And I again, all in. I, I think The Rock is amazing in these kinds of roles. Um, all, all for this. All for this. Yeah, and it, it had a glimpse of uh, Mission Impossible. I think yes. that's the thing that kind of got me. Yes. Um, but yes, all in. Um, yeah, Pitch Perfect was the other one that I'm very excited about. Uh, Ted Two got a lot of I got a lot of talk, and I don't know. Ted Two had its moments, but I don't know how I'm going to feel about this movie until until it comes out. I'm in. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that's fun. Hey, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. I love the first Ted. Um, it, it'll, it'll be good. I, I'm I'm into the the Seth MacFarlane humor. You know, I know some people are over it, but. I do kind of like it when um, Mark Wahlberg, too, kind of, like, kicks back and relaxes. That's always enjoyable. Uh, yeah, so the other – so I found this article on Empire Online, um, and <laughs> I don't know what you think about this, but we, I, I don't know. Did we talk about this last week? I feel like we have in, like, the last couple of weeks. Hmm. Um, but the uh, – X Men TV series. No, I. This is uh, the first. I don't know. My memory's shot. Apparently, that I don't remember another Furious Seven trailer. But uh, this is the first major kind of discussion I remember of this. So they're actually working out. Now we did have a made-for-TV movie pilot thing that didn't work out for Generation X like 20 years ago. Matt mm -hmm. Frewer in that, by the way, was really awesome. Um, but uh, but but so so this is for real. Like, is this just rumor at this point? I mean, or? It is. 
like the thing is that like uh as far as like it says that it's still far like it's the long rumored but it seems like it might be emerging as something like as they're going through negotiations with fox we might actually get this um but they were going through like the possible uh plot lines and i was scrolling through them during lunch uh the first one that they put up i i know a lot of people are probably gonna get angry at me about this because seeing it in the movie theater that alternate universe and then seeing it as a tv series like yes it would be cool but i don't want to go back to that like i would I have this weird like thing where I, I kind of just want to see my childhood come back to the live screen. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like there, there are also a lot of characters like rogue wasn't even in the, in the movie. Right. Well, so he, say, he, she had a cameo. She, I don't remember her cameo. I thought it got pulled. She was at the end. Yeah. Like, I don't know. What do you think about seeing that movie as you know, like, cause it's a good way for them to do with the Avengers with, uh, with agents of shield like it's a good way to tie people back into that ecosystem and that's uh but, and i don't think they have the problem that like wb has like maybe fox is going to be more willing to do something like this and they control the property so so why not after seeing you know the success other marvel properties have had why not just extend who is who put in here an x-files x-men crossover who what are these people <laughs> thinking what the heck some of these ideas are cool like and you can just kind of not even like cross that over so much just be like, well, there's this over here. Like, like some of these ideas in here. Like, what if they did one on the new mutants? You know, what if they did one on uh, on the X Corps? Like these these kind of other factions of X Men that are spinoffs from the X Men. Um, yeah. I, there's a lot. I mean, well, that series was Generation X, for instance. That was the live action one. I don't know why we don't feel at that time we couldn't do a full on X Men show, but we can have the kid mutants do it. You know, I, it, it seemed really odd yeah. to me for, for uh, adapting something like that. But, but the fact that this is uh, apparently this serious, I think that's real cool. I, and um, I'd like to see what they do, you know? Yeah. I mean, the two that I was pretty excited about was, uh, it'd be cool to see the X factor mm-hmm. uh, that I think that whole series, because then that way we're still like in, in an X-Men universe. Yeah. And it looks like they're looking at the, like, the government-run alternative, not the original X-Men X, X Factor, um, yeah. which that could be cool. I, some of these other ones, like X-23, it was like, well, let's have a chick. Everybody loves Wolverine. Let's have chick Wolverine, you know? Yeah. I, I think that would be really good for a series, like, you know. Um, put it's some, a Buffy style for that one. Yeah, that yeah, yeah. Put some young actress over in that, um, you know. I was also interested in Quicksilver. Mm-hmm. Like, like, if we got, like, a miniseries or something. Right, right, like, right. Like, highlight right. his story. But... <laughs> Uh, then, then that's kind of like going back on what I said about the other thing. Like we've seen the movie, we've seen it in the movie. Yeah, but, screw it. Let's just do Age of Apocalypse and just roll with it. Uh, you know, I know right? then you can do anything. Like it doesn't <laughs> even matter. Yeah. You know? uh, that would be amazing. Um, but yeah, those uh, those were the two big stories. But even just highlighting real quick on TV series and commercials, there was a commercial <gasps> for a television series <gasps> that that we were hooked on when we worked together and that Mad Mike told me to rewatch and many coworkers have told me to rewatch and to just fight through season two, which I am Mm -hmm. dragging through. Uh, Heroes, Heroes Evolution. Is it Heroes Evolution? I think it is. No, no, Reborn. Reborn. Uh, Yeah, dude. So the best part of that... um, (laughs) <laughs> so we see the uh, we see the horn rimmed glasses. I'm blanking on the name, mm-hmm. uh, but we see him, and we instantly everybody instantly knows. Like they heard the theme music, they see him, they instantly think, "Oh my gosh, it's the freaking heroes uh, commercial! It's coming back! This is freaking awesome, right?" Here's the thing that really got me pumped because I already knew that Siler's character wasn't coming back. He's got another uh, series going on. Yeah, so I, I knew he wasn't coming back, but the third character that they show is Chuck. What? <laughs> and they they kind of like dressed him up in a weird way that he kind of could be like a Siler, but just the fact that like I know how geeky he is in real life, and Chuck was interesting. Like I, I did not watch the whole series of Chuck, 
but I watched enough of it to say, like, yeah, I get it. I think he would be perfect for this role, whatever role that is. I am He's perfect so for excited. this universe, basically. Yes. I am so excited. I'm about so ashamed that I've never finished the series. I know that's why I'm, I'm like so I'm my so ashamed. It. I'm like, man, I I I gotta remember how it was. Um, and I, I can I recapture the magic is kind of my concern because the thing was they were the first thing on TV that did like TV the way that we loved comics. I felt, yeah, um, like not even Smallville captured that. I thought, and now we have Arrow, Flash, you know, mo- shows that are capturing the reason that we loved comics. So can heroes come back in this world? You know, it's like X-Men was such a groundbreaking movie for hero movies. And now you do X-Men like the first X-Men. It's not going to hold water after we've had the freaking Avengers, right? Yeah. Um, Like you cannot accept any level of cheese, you know, to that point. So like, what can they do with this? Um, But it's, there was such a, a, a massive, cause I, I, you know, I remember, man, I remember we would talk about heroes and then like on my lunch breaks, I was reading the comic they put out every week on the website, know, you, you know, yes. and they had the mini, the mini episodes or you were, you learned about the character that, that could hack stuff with her mind. And then she popped up like four episodes later. And you're like, I know that who that is, you know? And then the comic about her origin, like it was so engrossing. Um, the Matrix had this a little bit too because they had a bunch of comics and they had the Animatrix and everything and just expand that universe, right? Yeah. Especially since it's not we're taking X-Men, we're taking Spider-Man. We're creating X-Men and Spider-Man at this point. Um, so there's a lot of... It was really cool that they, they laid that groundwork instead of you plotting through 45 minutes at a time week to week as you do in the series. So, yeah, like to give an example of, of the height of Heroes, obviously season one, right? And it's... <laughs> Season one, about 80% of, of season one was above 13 million viewers each Ridiculous. episode. They had such a great mystery and they had, yeah. they had peril and they had, they had this, this interweaving story that just made it. Yep. So and then much. season two was right. their highest rated episode. It went really? only up to about 17 million views. Rider strike. From, from there, everything else tanked. From there, it dropped to 12. And then it never and it got was, hired. And they well. were a victim of the writer's strike. I think they. I think you would have had them go in seven seasons. I think they just never recovered from that second season in the writer's strike. Yeah. And this even has a listed. I don't understand. I, maybe. Do you know this? That they had a volume five called Redemption. It looks like they did 15 episodes. I thought that was a series that was. Maybe it's a. Was, is it a comic? Maybe. I'm not sure. Where are you on the Wikipedia? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll look into that. I'll look into that. In the meantime, hey, why don't you tell me what you watched this week? So this week I went to see. Um, oh, I'm blanking. Well, I have been watching on Netflix, uh, West Wing. <laughs> I don't know why. Something happened where. Um, I think it was a past episode of Court Killers, mm-hmm. where there's, or or it could have been uh, the 404, where they're talking about um, things being removed from Netflix, and I just freaked out and I was like, I never finished West Wing, <laughs> so I jumped back into Netflix, and I'm on season two, which is really sad, or season three of seven seasons, but uh, yeah, so I was watching Netflix. I had a free. Um, a free screening for uh, the the like the new James Bond movie, which I don't what? know why I can't the Kingsman. Oh, see, that's not James Bond. No, it, so the thing is that like it was really weird. Um, I went to see it with a friend. Uh, we had a free showing, and I we kind of both gave it like a B plus hmm. because like I don't know what it was trying to be. Like the action stuff was pretty cool, but it could have been even better. And then it had, like, the James Bond feel. And then there was just, like, silliness. So I don't know, like, if you were going to say, okay, what's the next up from, like, the revamp of the, the new James Bond that we have, right? And even right. Uh, the Bourne series. If you're saying, like, that's our serious, serious, like, uh, secret agent stuff now, um, 
this is like the old James Bond. Okay. For a new for a new age. So it was it was weird. Like I don't know, a B I, I think I was I'm more comfortable with like that that middle B area. So I I would always say like I recommend people go see it, but maybe as a matinee, because like this is a movie that somebody else might see and be like, Oh, I love this. Or they might have my opinion and be like, eh. To be honest, like, oh, that's the other sad thing. I give this movie credit. If this is if this was a movie draft, Mike, I probably would have overspent on this movie. I don't think anybody's going to get that reference. <laughs> like, uh, I think we're the only ones that yes. listen to that other show that may be name dropping you lately. <clears throat> Core killers. <clears throat> <laughs> um, basically, what I'm saying is that um, this is a movie that, based on the trailer, mm-hmm. like they did a good job of marketing. To me, at least, I guess to the kind of movies I like, they did a great job of marketing this movie. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. bravo to them. Um, yeah, I, I've also been watching, uh, I don't know, this might just, <laughs> I've been watching some new shows. Like, I'm trying to get caught up on Blacklist, and I started watching a new show called Empire. Uh, but mm. besides that, yeah, that's the only movie I saw this weekend. I gave, I got you passes though. To yes, see you a movie. did. Thank you very much. I enjoyed my SpongeBob SquarePants Sponge Out of Water. You can check out that review over at that ramblingreview.com and sorgatron.com. Did a little mini review for that. So I won't get too much into that. I really enjoyed it. Um, still, the, the, the biggest takeaway is um, wow, the parents laughed a lot, but the kids didn't. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> huh. But. I, Oh, yeah, but, but go check that out. I won't get too much into that. Uh, I feel like we don't get to this enough, so I wanted to make sure we do. Chachi says that he watched American Sniper. Uh, five out of five, he says. He watched Ninja Turtles today. Five out of five. Uh, that was great to get his live messages during that. I love that movie. Uh, it's it's a guilty pleasure at this point. Um, Dumb and Dumber, uh, two out of five. Oh, wow. Oh, Dumb and Dumber 2 or Dumber or or, or or whatever we talk about here. Uh, Wheels watched. He says Sirens, Night Watch, and Ted 2. That's not right. Yeah, you can't watch no, Ted 2. I don't 2. think you it's saw Ted 2. Yet. Um, I watched, uh, uh, what did I see? Oh, The Interview. It's on Netflix, oh. of course. That movie is way funnier than I expected it to be. <laughs> Bravo and, to you. And, and I watched it the day before the Katy Perry thing, and it just made, gave me a whole new meaning. Um, no, I was digging on that. I, I love that movie. I wouldn't have gone to the theater to see it, but it's like for a, hey, here's a Netflix movie less than a month after it came out uh, in the theater. It's like, damn, okay. You know, I mean, there's a lot of poop jokes and stuff, but it's a Seth, it's a Seth Rogen. My, f- fl- my final impressions on that movie is North Korea could have just let that movie go and nobody would have cared. Yeah, it's one of those, like, if you drew attention to it, it's a bigger deal than if you would have just left it alone. Way to go, yes. North Korea. Um, this would have just passed. This would have been up on our Pineapple Express, and nobody would have thought about it years later. But I checked it. It was, And now more people watched it and have an opinion about North Korea. <laughs> Um, I know, right? Other than that, I did finally get to watch Wolf on Wall Street. Yes, freaking amazing movie. Amazing oh, movie. Is that crazy? Um, I don't know why I haven't bought that movie yet. It's on my list. Well, it's on Netflix uh, right now if, if, if you have that. Um, also, oh, I almost forgot about this. I finished Transparent. Okay. Like, I loved it. I thought it was very great. real, right? Yeah, I think I finished it. Oh, I might actually, I might have an episode left. Oh, now I'm in this weird spot because I have an episode left of that. I have an episode left of season one of uh, Supernatural. I'm in this weird hangy uh-huh. part right now. Yeah, I don't think I finished. I think the last episode I watched was like episode nine where they flashed back for the entire episode to them as kids. Um, mm. I did forget there was a movie. I'll let you finish. There was okay. a movie that I saw. Um, that White about. Collar uh, finished off season five. I think we started watching it on Hulu, but just got sick of it because we were you know, watching it on a browser or through the TV kind of thing because it's not on, mm-hmm. like, Hulu Plus for whatever reason. It, again, I go, I go back to my earlier statement. Uh, if you're not on Hulu Plus but you're on Hulu, you're st- still dead to me as a series. Um, I'll wait for Netflix. And, and I finished Psych a few weeks ago, finally, you know, for instance. Um, uh, bu- 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 yeah, other than that, just some supernatural catching about that and the usual stuff, Grim. I mean, the usual stuff, Grim, uh, Constantine, uh, Sleepy Hollow, Flash Arrow, Gotham, Agent Carter, all, all that stuff is really, uh, I've been really enjoying everything. Uh, along I'm those so lines. behind on, on Grim. I need to catch up. Uh, you're all right. 
you're all right. I, I mean, I, I like Grimm, but I don't love Grimm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I don't get mad if I doze off during an episode, you know, but but it's like cool. You know, speaking of loving stuff, uh, agents of uh, Agent Carter. Uh, I definitely I think that that age period is is cool. But uh, besides that, eh. it's not doing it for you. It wasn't doing it for me. <laughs> Man, um, well, you give it give it a while because you know eventually. Wait till the first time they tie into a movie. I know, but that's the thing that's going to be annoying. Like I'm, I'm not liking. You don't like this that. woman empowerment in the fifties. Uh, no, no, issue. no, that's not it. And what I'm saying is, I'm not liking like the fact that if we miss something, it's going to make our movie experience even better. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know, it's just weird. But that's just me. That oh, for uh, a different demographic. People love that. Wheels was saying in the chat room, uh, he's he was loving the trailer for Ted Two. So, oh, also yes. I got to ask for him uh, in the chat. Uh, Night Watch, did you watch the dubbed version or the um, the subtitle version? Because I got to say, that was the first subtitled movie that I loved because the way they did the subtitles were really interesting. I'm like, oh, have you seen this? Night Watch? No, I don't think so. Get Night Watch, but make sure it's a subtitled version. They do such an interesting thing, and then I watched Day Day Watch as the sequel, and uh, when when they did the the dub overs, it just like lost all the feeling of the movie for me. Right, mm. like uh, it was it was if you find that like, but it has to be not the stupid dub or the stupid subtitles like you usually see. It has to be the ones where they actually did effects to the subtitles. Okay, like if somebody like trails off, like their subtitle trails off. Like like in moves and and, and like underwater, it, it looks different, you know, and stuff like that. Like it was really cool. I think he probably dig that as a, as a visual effect. I, Kyle saw that with me. Ask him about that one. So, okay, yeah, I'll check that out. Uh, the other two movies I forgot. I don't know if I mentioned this last week. I saw The Gambler with Mark Wahlberg. Okay, that movie goes in such a weird tangent. Like I don't I don't know. He must have read that script and thought it was like something else, <laughs> because I, he usually picks like pretty artistic movies now and like pretty good movies. Uh, this one was not one of them. Uh, the other one though that we were that we talked about on the show, Dear White People, I, I watched that movie and um, I don't know if it's because I have an interracial daughter. But it made sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, so is the super niche movie of wait, what was the what was the premise? Is it because of the interracial thing, or just the t- stuff they're talking about, or? Well, no, the inter- like the, the thing was she was playing like this very hard like pro, like she it was basically she is it's a, like the the argument that interracial kids usually are confronted with is. Which side do they really belong to? Mm-hmm. And that that was the it's, underarching. It's like, a it's a theme. Self, it's like a cultural self identifying yeah. issue. Yeah, I get that. So of course they added like all of this other junk on top of it, which probably did not help like people going to see this movie. With that being said, I I know this movie didn't do great in theaters, and it's definitely not one that I would have. Recommended people see in theaters. Mm. I would recommend you wait until it comes out on Netflix. So it would be a cool Netflix watch. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't even go. Yes. I, in this weather, I would not even go out to a red box to pick mm. it up. Sign up unless hey, you're into that. Quasi related, I, I guess, because of the issues involved. Have you been watching the nightly show? No. What were the issues involved with the nightly show? Um, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, minority issues. Um, it, it's really interesting because it's kind of like if you took Bill. Oh, Mon- I did watch an episode because you guys talked about it. Yeah, uh, yeah, it, it's um, it, it's interesting. I, I, I'd love to get your take on it because I'm not the type to really be involved in a lot of the issues. Um, but <laughs> I'm but sure, he pisses off a lot of people. Oh yeah, oh yeah, completely. Um, <laughs> but, but it's like it's like a uh, Bill Maher, but not annoying. Yeah. Well, the way he does his roundtables, I, I really like the what he's doing. The second weekend, I think he uh, like I get it. You know, um, and it's it's in my rotation now. Um, it's not as awesomely crazy as Colbert, but I think as mm-hmm. a character, he wasn't going to be able to. I was really I was really worried he was just going to sit there and do an episode of the um, awkward, uh, awkward black correspondent that he was on on, on Daily Show. But he really mm-hmm. kind of took that to a whole different level. And now uh, keep it 100 is in my vocabulary. 
So, <laughs> so yeah, I'll check out another episode. To see yeah, yeah. Let I... me know what you think of that. And it's not just. I mean, it's not just minority issues. It's uh, like uh, Monday's episode was about obesity. You know, uh, so I mean, it's the whole <laughs> round. But there's definitely like starting at minority issues and going on from that. Like he's he's definitely cultural first and then on. You know, so is nice. my is my take on it at least. So, uh, cool. Um, yeah, do we have anything to plug this week? Oh, uh, well, like I said, check out our reviews. We haven't mentioned it enough. Um, and check out other stuff at sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, check out our sponsor, of course, at the top of the show, uh, sliceonbroadway.com, and everything else going on uh, there. Uh, and uh, anything else? We're, we're doing a little bit of everything, Malengo, and it's pretty cool. And like I said, I started some new daily shows, uh, 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 awesome cast, kind of a tech sec uh, quick hit. I'm going to try to do four days a week, uh, Mayhem Minute. Uh, another quick thing I want to try to do uh, four days a week, and uh, we're going to see where it goes from there. Cool. And uh, also, follow uh, people should definitely start following me on Twitter, if you're in the Pittsburgh area, at least, or if you just want to. Uh, but if you're in the Pittsburgh area, I get um, I get a lot of uh, free passes to movies, but I also get the links where you can sign up for those passes. So I, I've been trying more frequently that when those movies come through, I'll uh, push them forward to people on Twitter and on our Facebook group, which is Rambling Mango, or the Rambling Movie Minute. (laughs) Rambling Mango is my Twitter tag. Uh, But yes, with that, uh, that's it for this week's Rambling Movie Minute. And until next week, have a Rambling Movie Weekend. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Let's talk tech. Tech news discussions from the people in the industry right here in Pittsburgh. Online, gadgets, startups, and more. Check it out at awesomecast.net.